Once a property goes under contract, you will also need to update the property data spreadsheet with the uh, under contract date, the under contract purchase price, if there's any seller paid concessions, and then also the closing date for that property. So in this example, we'll just be here in CTME contracts. In this example, we use the property address at 1051 South Addison Way. So you'll click on that. And then you'll want to go to the buyer's folder that went under contract. You will need to open up the original offer. So you're going to go to view offer. Click on that. And then you'll need to click back on the tab that you were just on and you need to scroll back up and you will need to open up the counter proposal as well. And you'll need to hit the print preview to actually see the contract when it was signed and everything. You can close the tab next to that because that's not important anymore. So right now we have the counter proposal open for that property. We also have the original offer open for that property. So going back to the um, property data spreadsheet, click on that tab. We need to locate the property on Addison. Now, the way our current spreadsheet is set up, we have properties that are going to be ready for the market that week. We have properties that are under construction, new properties that have been purchased, properties that are occupied, vacant, nothing's happening with those. And then finally, we have what I typically work on are the listed properties and the under contract properties. Um, below that we have rentals and pending properties, but you will only be focusing on the listed and under contract. So once again in this example, we have 1051 South Addison Way. That did just go under contract, but before we make any changes over here to the phase that it's in, we're going to update the spreadsheet to the far right now. We have you just scroll over to the very far right. These fields over here are frozen, so they should remain the same. And then the fields that you, the boxes that you will need to input are the under contract date, the under contract price, seller concessions, and the closing date. Now you will get all that information from either the original offer or the counter proposal. So jumping back to the property data spreadsheet, we have the under contract date. That's the first thing we need to fill in for this property on Addison. To know that, you will need to click on the counter proposal um, if there is a counter proposal. And you're going to scroll down and you're simply going to look to see when all parties signed. So, all parties signed on March 18th. So, you will simply type in March 18th and then tab over under contract price. This one you're going to have to look at both the original offer and the counter proposal as there might have been changes when the uh, seller countered. So the original offer, if you scroll down, in the original offer they are offering 485000 And you scroll down a little bit further, seller concessions is NA, so they're not wanting any seller concessions. So now we need to check out the counter proposal. Make sure that there's nothing changed to the price. We do not have any changes to the price. So when you come back to the spreadsheet, we're going to type in the under contract price of 485000 The seller concessions, as we saw from the original offer, they were asking for no seller concessions. So we're going to put zero. And now the last fill that we need to um, fill out is the actual closing date. Once again, we'll probably need to look at both the original offer and the counter proposal for this. So on the original offer, if you scroll back up, they have a closing date of May 17th, 2016. Now the question is, did the seller counter that? So if we click on the counter tab, are there any changes to the closing date? And in the counter proposal, they have a closing date that says that there's no change. So that means that the closing is still May 17th, 2016. Now, if the seller had countered the closing date, you would have seen a date change here. And that is the date that you would use um, for, for this example. So right now we know that it's May 17th, 2016. Now, 
all these fields have been properly inputted with the proper under contract date, under contract price, seller pay concessions, and closing date. Well, now we need to change it from the phase that it's in because it's still currently in the listed phase. And to do that, you'll come over here to the right, click on that little drop down menu, and then you'll click on the 7 UC for under contract. Perfect. Well, it's still in the listing phase. So now you're going to need to update the property data spreadsheet. And to do that, you go up to data, newly under contract property out of the listed phase and down to the under contract phase. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to highlight the whole spreadsheet. If you don't highlight the whole spreadsheet, it will actually ruin everything. So to highlight the whole spreadsheet, you just come up to this far left corner right here, click on it once and everything goes blue. Now the next thing you're going to need to do is to update the data. So you're going to come up to data, hit sort range, and then you're going to use the acronym BAD, BAD. So the first column we're going to change is column B. Then you're going to hit add another sort column. Now we're going to do A, add another sort column, D. So you're always going to do BAD to adjust this spreadsheet. BAD. And once you hit sort, now those changes are made. Addison is no longer in the listed section. And as you'll notice, it's now under the under contract section. And that is how you update a property in the property data spreadsheet once it has gone under contract.